Hello and welcome MMSD students. We are so happy to have you joining us here today. My name is Allison and I work with farm to school programs at REAP Food Group. REAP Food Group is a nonprofit here in Madison and we work to connect farmers with their local communities, restaurants, schools, and classrooms much like you're joining from right now. Now over the last couple of months, we have partnered with the amazing individuals who bring you your breakfast, lunches, and snacks each and every day your MMSD Food and Nutrition Department. And together we've been brainstorming events and opportunities for you all, MMSD students, to explore all the Wisconsin produce that you can dip, twirl, crunch, and devour. Now, today we're excited to be kicking things off with our first virtual farm tour with Vitruvian Farms and Farmer Tommy. But before I turn things over to Tommy, I do have a couple housekeeping things to talk through with our teachers. Teachers, today we're gonna to be utilizing the poll function and the poll question is gonna be popping up on your screen right now. We would like to know how many of your students like mushrooms? So if you could go ahead and take a classroom count, how many of your students like mushrooms and report that back as a percentage, we'll take a look at the results a little later on here in the tour. Once again, how many of your students like mushrooms? We also want to thank you to everyone who submitted questions ahead of time. We've sent those over to Tommy and we're hopeful to answer as many questions as we can throughout the tour here today. One of the cool things about this being a virtual live tour is your students can continue to ask questions throughout the tour. If you're joining via Zoom, teachers, we ask that you submit your students' questions via the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please note that the Zoom chat function is currently turned off. If you're joining us via YouTube, we ask, we ask that you go back to your registration email and actually join us via Zoom if you wish to ask questions because the chat function is turned off in YouTube to allow for streaming to schools. Now, I think that takes care of all of my housekeeping items. And without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to Tommy at Vitruvian Farms. Tommy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Tommy. I am uh, your farmer here at Vitruvian Farms. Um, and our farm uh, grows a lot of things here at the, at, at the farm, um, one of which being mushrooms, but that is not the only thing we grow here. Um, we grow quite a few things here at the farm. We're actually gonna show you some videos of some things we do grow here in addition to mushrooms. So um, one thing we grow a lot of here are what called microgreens. Now, microgreens are basically uh, little plants. They're little versions of plants that you might be very familiar with, like sugar snap peas, we grow pea shoots. Uh, sunflowers, we grow sunflower shoots. Um, arugula, we grow micro arugula. Um, we grow these year round. So this greenhouse you're looking at right now, even when it's in the middle of winter, we have this greenhouse at a balmy 70 degrees, even at night. Um, it allows us to have this available 365 days a year. And these are really great for you to include in your diet uh, every day because they're really high in vitamins and minerals. And it's once again, it's something that you can get from a local farmer all year long. Now, another thing we grow at the farm, if you wanna to go to the next video, is a salad mix. Now, salad mix for us isn't available all year but we do offer it a long part of the growing season. One reason is because we grow it in greenhouses. We have seven greenhouses here at the farm. And uh, here is a video of salad mix that we actually harvested today uh, to go out to restaurants and grocery stores all over Madison. Um, what you see on your left is a variety of different lettuces. Next to that is what's called brassicas, like mizuna and kale and arugula, and on the far right is spinach, which we both put in our salad mix and we sell it by itself as spinach that you can either saute 
or have it just fresh as a salad. If you want to go on to the next uh, slide. So now talking about mushrooms. Um, mushrooms, there's three processes to growing mushrooms. And the first process is what's called uh, inoculation or seeding, if you want to compare it to plants. Um, we take our mushroom bags, which you see behind you, and put it in that container and heat it up to make it clean for the mushrooms. Now, if you want to go to the next uh, uh, video, this is our what's called our clean room. And in this room, we purify the air so that it's 99.99% .99 clean. So when we put our mushroom seeds in these bags, um, they aren't competing with anything else, no other bacteria or other fungi so that they can get all the food that we're giving it and no other, uh, nothing else gets that. Now, the second step of growing mushrooms is what's called incubation or forming its root system. So uh, after we've taken the, the mushrooms out of that first uh, space, we move them in here and they go in a process of colonizing the bag or taking over the bag and eating all the food. This takes anywhere from two to 13 weeks, depending on what type of mushroom we're growing. And now, if you want to go on to the next one, or actually this might be the last one. Oh yeah, and here is a full view of our incubation room. There are thousands of blocks in this room. Each block will produce two to three pounds of mushrooms. And like I said, some of these blocks were planted three months ago, and we're still waiting to bring them over to produce mushrooms. So there's actually no mushrooms in that bag. There's what's, what's called mycelium or the best way to think of that is roots. So like a plant has roots, mushrooms have roots too. So if you wanna go on to the next one, or I think we might be going live now. Awesome. Now, before we move into uh, a little more explanation, uh, does anyone have any questions? Tommy, we've got some great questions coming in. And one of the first questions I wanna ask, is a mushroom considered a plant? That's a really great question. And I will be honest, I knew they weren't, but I wanted to research a little more to give you a little more explanation of why they're different. So a mushroom is not a plant. A mushroom is a fungi. And the main difference between a plant and a fungi is that a plant can produce its own food through photosynthesis. And a mushroom needs to consume food, which is why we, like I said, we in that bag, we have food for the mushrooms to grow. So that's the main difference between a plant and a mushroom. Fantastic. And I've got a couple more questions, but before I ask them of you, I'd like to ask a question of our students, if that's okay. Great. Teachers, we're going to open up the chat function in Zoom, and we would like to know what type of mushroom varieties can your students name? So feel free to enter any mushroom names that your students might know. By the way, did we get an answer to the first question? Ah, yes, that we do have results and I'll pull those up here. Here are some of the names that we've got coming in. We've got button mushrooms, we've got truffle, lion's mane, white Ooh. umbrella, morel. Our students seem to know a lot of mushroom varieties. Yeah, huh? I don't think I knew that many mushrooms until I started growing mushrooms. So that's amazing. Okay. This, is, this is great, there are a lot. And as far as the results to our first question, I think we can pull up those results here in just a second. Um, and it looks like um, how many of your students like mushrooms? Oh, we had low, we had a few students, we had um, less than 50%, I'd say less than 50% of students like mushrooms. Um, but hopefully we can change your mind today with, uh, with this tour and you'd be excited uh, to try mushrooms in the future. That's, you know, honestly though, I, I, I did not think I liked mushrooms until I started growing them. I went my whole life um, as a kid and in school thinking that, oh, I, I don't like mushrooms. And once I started growing them and I started trying them cooked really well, um, now it's one of my favorite foods to eat and I have it with almost every meal. So don't uh, give up on them if you're not sure right now um, because it's, a real, it's really good for you. They're really good for our environment to grow them. They're really important to our environment. So if you can give, your, give another chance, if you're not sure, I think you'll eventually find that they're really great. 
Well, and Tommy, if, could I ask you a couple more questions from our students? Go for it. Awesome. Um, students want to know, what is your favorite mushroom? Ooh, that's a really great question. You know, it changes a lot um, as I try more. Um, of the ones we grow, my favorite are shiitake mushrooms, um, which are the second most popular mushroom in the world behind button mushrooms. Um, but if I had to pick any one that if I could get it, it's one called chicken of the woods mushrooms, which are one that grows um, in this area in woods all around you. Um, they're orange in color and they, they are said to resemble both the taste and texture of chicken. And I, I will say they do. They're, they're really cool. I've got one more, or I'll ask you one more question here. Um, it was, um, this fourth grade classroom would like to know, are mushrooms poisonous? So mushrooms can fall under multiple categories of um, edible, can make you feel weird, or can be poisonous. So um, it is definitely something to be mindful of, of are these mushrooms safe to eat? Um, and you won't ever go to a grocery store or, or to your local farmer's market and be offered a mushroom that isn't safe to eat. Um, but if you do ever decide to go foraging, um, that is something to know. You should know your mushrooms. And there are ones in this area that, that can make you at least feel bad. Um, and in general, too, it is important to cook your mushrooms, whether um, you're eating something from the woods or something from the store. All mushrooms need to hit a certain temperature to be safe to eat. Otherwise, you can get stomach aches or feel ill if you eat raw mushrooms. That's good to know. So we should know what types of mushrooms. Uh, can I ask one more question? I Go think this is it. a good one. Uh, do mushrooms have seeds? So mushrooms have spores. So um, it's best to think of them like seeds, but when the mushrooms grow, so what you actually see and eat are the fruits of mushrooms where the mycelium are the roots. And once those mushrooms have fruited and they're mature, uh, they will then produce spores, which those spores will float into the air and spread all over. And they will produce future mycelium or, or root bodies in the soil for future years. Interesting. Well, I'll let you continue on with a tour, but I know I've got some more questions coming in that we'll ask here in a little bit. Awesome. I'm going to go over a few more details of how we grow mushrooms, and then we're going to go in our mushroom caves and see where they fruit. So um, over here, we have an example of one of our mushroom bags um, that is being colonized right now. Now, what is inside this bag is a combination of sawdust, and soybean hulls. Now this is considered the food for mushrooms. Like I said before, mushrooms don't make their own food. They need to consume food. And this is what mushrooms eat. This is an example of what our mushrooms eat. Not all mushrooms eat this, but this is what ours eat. Now in this bag, we uh, filled it with sawdust and soybean hulls. And then we added the mushroom spores, which are like their seeds. And what's happening here is this white is the mushroom colonizing the bag or consuming all the food. And once it's, see how it's getting white, but it's not all the way white, is in the process of consuming this food. Now, once it's consumed all the food, the bag, bag turns fully white, the mushroom will have, the mycelium will have run out of food and that will trigger it to produce fruit. That's what we eat, our, our mushrooms, our fruits of the mycelium. So at that point, um, we take these bags and we do a process called birthing the mushrooms, which in essence is opening up this bag, exposing it to oxygen, light, and moisture. And that not only helps the mushroom grow healthy, but tells the mushroom which way to grow, the light. These mushrooms need light to know where to grow. Um, and then as they fruit, they are releasing all of that food that they've consumed to then produce future spores or seed for the next round. Now, we don't let them do that because we harvest them and get them to, to uh, people to eat. So um, if you look over here to this side, you can see a few examples of the mushrooms we grow. Now, clearly there's a few out there that know this mushroom. This is lion's mane. Um, it gets that name from, as you can see, it has what looks like a lion's mane. It almost looks like it's hair growing. 
uh, on this mushroom. Next to it is shiitake. I'm sure many of you have had shiitakes before, especially those uh, mushroom lovers out there. This is once again, a very popular mushroom all over the world. Um, one that you can get at any store, most farmers markets. Um, and then off to this side, our last one, main one that we grow are what's called oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are really cool. Um, one, they're absolutely gorgeous. If you look underneath, you can see all those little fibers. And eventually that's where the spores will come out of. Once they get bigger, we'll be right out of there. Um, this mushroom is really great for cooking because it's really mild in flavor. And I like to call them flavor vessels because they take on the flavor profile of whatever you're cooking with. So if you're making pasta or um, you're cooking with meat or um, whatever you like to eat, these mushrooms will partially take on that flavor um, when you cook with them. So um, in addition to those three, we also grow chestnut mushrooms, which you saw in the opening picture before we started talking today. They're orange and they have a nice nutty flavor. Um, so that's mainly what we grow for mushrooms here. Um, at this point, uh, does anyone have any thoughts or questions? Um, or if you want to have a poll question, uh, we're going to move on into our first grow room. Tommy, we have got so many great questions and I'm just going to pick a few here. Okay. But Someone wants to know what dishes can be made with mushrooms, what foods and, and meals? That's a great question. So, you know, really I wouldn't put mushrooms into a certain food category. You can put mushrooms in almost anything. Like I said, you could have pasta, um, you could saute them up, let them cool and add that some, to some rice or a cold salad even, um, but still cook those mushrooms even if you add them to something cold. Um, but I like to make uh, imitation crab cakes with lion's mane. Um, I like my shiitakes and eggs. Um, I like my oyster mushrooms with pasta or a meat option. Um, but really you can put them in anything you want. And that's, what's cool about mushrooms is because they're their own food group. They're not meat. They're not plants. They're fungi. And with that, you can add fungi to any dish that you want to eat. Very cool. Someone else asked, how big can mushrooms grow? That's really a good question. Um, they can grow all different sizes. So um, there's mushrooms, obviously the shiitake over here are a bit smaller, um, but there's mushrooms that grow in the wild that can be um, as big as a tree stump. And so you could have a 20, 30 pound mushroom um, in the wild. Most of our mushrooms don't get above, like this lion's mane mushroom, it won't get any bigger. One of these clusters will be at best like a pound, which is a lot. Um, or these oyster clusters can be as big as two or three pounds, just one cluster of mushrooms. Awesome. Well, I'll let you take us into the cave here and we'll pull some more awesome. a little bit. So yeah, we like to call this the mushroom cave, um, but these are our mushroom grow rooms and we try to mimic the, um, the look and feel of a cave. And there's a reason why we do that. Um, and the reason why we call it a cave is because caves are moist and they are cool. So um, mushrooms don't like it hot and they don't like it dry. So that's why you see a lot of mushrooms in the spring um, outside, like morels. Morels are a, available in the spring because it's wet and it has cold nights. So we recreate that here in these rooms. Um, we keep these rooms at about 55 degrees and we have it at about 90% humidity. So it kind of feels like we're in a rainforest in here. Um, and we pump air that is clean and moist in here at all times. And if you come over here, you can see all these mushrooms that are about ready to harvest. Um, each one of these, these are all shiitakes. Each one of these will be about two to three pounds of mushrooms. And believe it or not, this room alone produces about 200 pounds of mushrooms per week. So it doesn't, compared to farming like vegetables outside, we can grow a lot of food in not a lot of space and we can do it all year round. So it's a really cool thing for us as a farm to grow, um, to uh, give us something that we can offer all year round. Now, uh, I'm sure everyone's like, whoa. So is there any questions about this space that we're in right now? Oh, Tommy, I am, I am taking a look here. Um, I do have a question and I'm, I'm not sure if you'll know the answer, but I'll ask it. 
Um, do you know what the rarest type of mushroom is? You know, that's a tough question because, you know, mushrooms are, um, you know, there, a lot of them are in only certain locations, um, certain climates. So mushrooms might be rare in one part of the world, but not rare in another. Um, there are some very rare mushrooms. And I'm trying to think, I believe one is called a chaga mushroom, which is very, uh, has a lot of medicinal properties that I know that people are working really hard to figure out how to grow more of them. But they're, um, they're what's called uh, mushrooms that grow in old growth forests. So they need very old trees to be able to grow. And unfortunately with climate change and deforestation, there's just less of these old, old um, forests for these mushrooms to grow. Mm. Well, Tommy, I've got one more question. I think this ties into where we might be going next. How, yeah. do, you, how do you harvest mushrooms? Ooh, that's a great question. So on that note, let's go to our next mushroom cave and we'll see where the lion's mane are grown. Fantastic. Tommy, while we're walking there, how many of these caves do you have? So we have five mushroom uh, caves. Um, each cave has a specific climate for the mushroom that's growing inside of it. So, you know, oysters need a little bit different temperature and humidity than shiitake. Oh, this is perfect timing. So uh, farmer Matt is in the lion's mane room right now harvesting. So we're going to get a up close and personal look of how to harvest lion's mane mushrooms. So if you come on in here and focus right at these mushrooms, Matt's going to show you how they harvest. They actually harvest super easily, um, but he just comes in and he has to pop them out. And you can see underneath how that food that we have in there is connected to the mushroom. It's one in the same. This is the root system, the mycelium of the mushroom coming in to the bag. And that is what's producing the fruit. And you can see here, we've cut these bags open at these specific spots. So it got that oxygen. It was able to release carbon dioxide and it was exposed to moisture and light. And boom, you have lion's mane mushrooms. Wow. Tommy, yeah. I've got another question coming in. Uh, what, what colors do mushrooms come in? These are, these look white or cream. What other colors do mushrooms have come in? That's a great question. Mushrooms grow in many different colors. Um, we have ones here at the farm that are gray, white, brown, and orange. Um, but mushrooms can be purple. They can be red. They can glow in the dark. Um, really, mushrooms and the fungi world is very fascinating. And there are so many varieties that we haven't even discovered yet. Um, just like trying to discover new species of animals, um, there's many types of fungi that we don't even know exist until we go exploring in new parts of the world and then find those in, in woods everywhere and go, wow, that's, that's something new. Very cool. And Tommy, I've got a question directly for you. How did you learn about mushrooms and all that you do? That's a really cool question. So um, I own this farm with one other person. His name is Sean. And together we decided to start a farm uh, right after we finished college. And we did not go to school for farming. Um, we did not um, go to you know, a further education to farm. We didn't have family that farmed. Um, but what we did have was an excitement and a willingness to learn. And we got to reading books. We watched YouTube videos. Um, we joined mushroom groups to try to learn. And really, we just did trial and error. So we would try planting some mushrooms and maybe it would work, maybe it wouldn't. But from that, we learned. And a lot of what we do here on the farm is from self-teaching. And really, you know, we didn't say, you know, let's go to school and let's choose to be farmers that way. We had a passion for it. We thought it could do good for our society and our environments. And we started just learning. And through time and trial and error and a lot of failure, um, we learned how to grow mushrooms and many other things here at the farm. Awesome. And how old is your farm, Tommy? So our farm started in 2010. So our farm is now 12 years old. We can head back down. 
Great. Oh, right. So while you're walking, uh, we had a question about the lion's mane mushrooms. Are they, they, they look really soft and fluffy. Are they soft and fluffy? They are. So they're, they're dense in the center. And, uh, but those, those fibers, those hairs, they're very soft. So they actually feel good to touch. Now they're not going to like it, but you know, it is something that is very cool. Um, the, the, um, the texture of these mushrooms and a lot of mushrooms, like for example, the oyster have a really like rubbery and kind of smooth texture. Um, so once again, mushrooms come in all different shapes, sizes, textures, colors. Um, they're, they're a really cool um, and um, varied species of fungus, so. Excellent, Tommy, I've got two questions about your farm. Um, one, how many people work at the farm? And then two, what does a typical day look like for you? Um, so we have, right now, um, we have 14 people that work on the farm in all different areas. So um, we have people that just do mushroom growing. We have people that just do vegetable growing. We have people that just do um, meeting with our customers and getting the food they need. Um, but a typical day for us, um, you know, to be honest, it's, it's varied. Um, we, right now we're in the spring, so we're doing a lot of planting um, out in our fields. Uh, we're doing some harvesting, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but then we have to spend a lot of time uh, cleaning our farm, keeping it looking nice. Um, we're doing a lot of washing of our vegetables. So today we harvested greens. We harvested almost 400 pounds of salad greens today. And then we had to wash those greens, bag them. And tomorrow morning, they're going to go in a truck and go all over Madison to a bunch of different restaurants. Oh, awesome. Well, Tommy, we've got about three minutes left in our tour. So I want to ask you, is there anything that we didn't get a chance to ask you that you want to share with the students? You know, I think I'm really excited once again to hear how many people like mushrooms, but, you know, be adventurous with eating, uh, try new things. Uh, food is a really exciting thing. And when I was a kid, I didn't get that same experience of being told, try new foods. I was told what I liked and what I didn't like. And once I started to get to try new things, I realized that there was this whole world out there of cool foods to eat. And all I had to do was ask and be open-minded. And now I have so many more foods I get to eat all the time because I decided I wanted to try them. So be open-minded and try new foods. Oh, that is awesome. Well, Tommy, we wanna say a huge thank you to you for sharing your knowledge and your mushroom caves with us. This has been really great. Um, I wanna do a, a couple of wrap up items here with our teachers. Um, at the conclusion of this tour, teachers, there's going to be a uh, survey that pops up in your Zoom browser. And we just ask that you take a few minutes to fill that out. It gives us really valuable feedback about planning for future tours. Um, we're also, uh, that'll also be included in the automated email that's sent from Zoom within 24 hours of this tour. Also, with this registration, you had the chance to sign up for one of three different books, Sylvia's Spinach, Sylvia's Spinach in Spanish, and Will Allen and the Growing Table. And uh, just wanted to give you an update. We're hoping to get those books to you within two to four weeks. So we say thank you for joining us for this tour, and thank you for your patience as we work on ordering and getting those books distributed. But all of the classrooms that signed up that wanted a book will for sure uh, be getting a book for their classroom. And if you forgot to sign up, um, you can email events at reapfoodgroup.org. And I'll say teachers, stay tuned to your inbox. Uh, we're gonna have another virtual farm tour and start promotions for that very soon. Uh, we're gonna be touring Wonka's Harvest on Tuesday, May 24th at 10 a.m. And with that, I'm gonna give a big thank you. It looks like Tommy has a really special friend joining us for the last part bit <gasps> of the tour. Who is this? Hey, yeah, this is, this is my dog, Curry. Uh, he's almost two years old now. He's a, a livestock guardian dog. So he's here to protect the farm. Now we don't have any livestock on the farm right now, but he does keep an eye on our employees and make sure they're on tasks. So um, he's a really lovely guy. He's huge. He's like a hundred pounds. Um, he's big and floofy like the lion's mane mushrooms. Oh, that is awesome. Well, thank you for having Curry join us today. You are very welcome. He said, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, teachers and students. And well, that will wrap up. But we appreciate everyone joining us. And we look forward to you, forward to you all joining us on our next virtual farm tour. Have a great day.